We're back. Another episode of the DC Podcast. I'm Sean. I'm Russell. And we are once again taking a break from Critical Theory to do a different episode. And part of that is because we want to make sure that we got we don't uh, rush through our prep and, and, and give our viewers... Uh, yeah, just less than the best quality work we can give them. Right. And right. well, and we have a special guest that we're trying to arrange True. to talk with us about some critical theory stuff. So be on the lookout for that. So yeah, and he's he's not available today, so we are going to take this opportunity to shift topics. Yep. Which is good because this has been a long series and we want to yeah. cover all kinds of things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So what we're going to talk about today is congregational singing. And I think rather than talking about it, we yeah. should just model. We should just sing it. Yes. Uh, whoo. Here we go. Okay. Uh, wee, wee, wee. Are you warmed up? <laughs> uh, let me tell you, my wife, when we go to sing on a Wednesday night, when we sing the doxology before mm-hmm. we wrap up, or when we learn a new song uh, to, to sing on Sunday, she won't stand next to me because I'm such a bad singer that I will ruin it for her. <laughs> she's a good singer. She's, she's well, a very good she's singer. A, she's a loud singer. Okay. Uh, but I'm a very bad singer. She's going to listen to this. I that seems unlikely, <laughs> but it's interesting that we're doing this because you can you can carry a tune, but you're not like an over the top music. Like like your favorite part about a Sunday service is not the singing. Mm, depends. Okay, depends Could, on, on can be it can be okay if the sermon is mediocre. Yeah, and the songs are just right. Yeah, there it is, and the Boom. congregation singing well. So if all the calculus works, yeah, yeah. But it, I, we're not the music guys. We're not, music we're not guys. like Matt Merker. No. We're not like the Keith Gettys of the world. No, far but, from it. But but we do think that singing together as a congregation is important. And we actually would say that how you sing together as a congregation matters for a right understanding and application of the gospel. I agree. Right? Because that's what this show is about, right? Defend and confirm podcast. And we think that even the way we sing in the life of the church has some impact there. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's easy to look at singing and, and the music ministry of a church and think of it sort of like, well, do you choose chairs or pews? Yeah. Or do you have, uh, how do you set up your lighting? Or yeah. do you have a greeter at the door? Just sort of those those things that aren't of really critical significance within yeah. the life of the church that yeah. can come or go, give or take. Just very much up to preference. And that is not the case at all. We think God's word has a lot to say about how the church should sing together. That's right. So yeah. let me begin by asking you a question. <sighs> okay. <sighs> you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Why do we sing? Mm. So there are a couple of different reasons. Uh, I would say the biggest reason why we sing is because God loves singing, okay? Uh, Now, I'm not going to go down the rabbit trail here, but you see at certain places in Scripture where it talks about God singing over his people. As you read through the Bible as one big story, you see that salvation history uh, carries a tune, right? There's a soundtrack to the story that's unfolding, the drama as it plays out. It has music playing in the background, Mm. Uh, so God has worked music into the life of his people from the beginning to the end. Right. Uh, so it's very important to him. You see this in various ways, like as soon as he calls a people to himself, one of the first things that he does is teach them a song Mm -hmm. so that they can sing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, which leads me into number two, uh, the reason why God calls his people to sing this song, right? The song of uh, Moses is, uh, or is that Miriam's song? I always get it confused. I think she gets credit. She gets credit. She's get, especially in these days. She's, yeah. she's get, she gets credit. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's because singing actually does something for us, mm-hmm. right? It, it helps us remember our history. Uh, singing is didactic in nature. That means that it's a tool, an instrument used to teach uh, the people, not right. just their history, but how they're to conduct themselves, so on and so forth, which is why, incidentally, uh, I think that uh, the person who has primary oversight of the music in the church should not be the music director. It should be a pastor. It should be a pastor. Yeah. Now, a music director is fine to have, good to have, right? Because like in our church, for example, I don't know much about keys and pitch and musical theory. Or and, anything. Or <laughs> anything. I can't even <laughs> sing. But I do understand uh, that the pastor is supposed to have primary oversight in the teaching of the church, and we understand singing to be a form of teaching. Right. Okay. So reason number one, 
God loves it. Reason number two, because it's useful Mm -hmm. to do all kinds of things in the life of the church related to teaching. And uh, reason number three is because God has designed singing to be one of the main instruments that he uses to build up the church, right? All of God's church is being built up through various aspects of the ministry of the word. And we think that like in that in, in, in like the the universe of, uh, not not the universe, what am I looking for here? The galaxy? What are we? Earth surrounding solar a solar system? In the solar system. There we go. I'm a science guy. In the solar system of word ministry, we think that the preaching of God's word is like the sun, right? Yeah. So so when you say the ministry of the word, yeah. I think some Christians will, th- will hear that okay. and think preaching, period. Right. No, no, no. We mean... We can preach the word, we can sing the word, we can pray the word. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper and baptism, we're taking, we're seeing a visualization of the word, right? So we would just say that singing is an important element in the word ministry of the church, That's which is right. why it's good for us to sing songs that are saturated with scripture, yep. full of God's word, and not songs like, in a sloppy wet kiss, you know. That's a real song. <laughs> So you see this in places like Colossians 3, mm. where Paul tells the church at Colossa, Colossi, Colossia, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Okay, so the word is in you, mm-hmm. not, not, not a little bit in you, it's richly in you, so much so that it overflows, right? Teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness to God in your hearts, right? So there's something about I'm I'm filled up with God and his word, and then that overflows in all different kinds of ways, including like me teaching fellow members of the congregation. And one of the ways that I do that is by singing. Yeah. Right? And, and, that, and that singing, particularly in this verse, you see that there is a vertical aspect yep. and a horizontal aspect, yep. which we're singing back to God, his word, yep. and we're singing his word and the gospel to one another as That's a right. congregation, which we'll touch on more in a little bit here. Yeah, but it's just a pattern that you see throughout the New Testament. What you receive from God should overflow out of you into your neighbors, primarily your brothers and sisters in Christ. So if I'm in church, yeah, gathered together with the saints, and I'm just kind of standing in the back, tight-lipped, yeah. not singing a hymn, yeah. Or a song, or a spiritual song. Mm. Is that a sin? Uh, it could be. Walk me through that. How how would I diagnose that? Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe you've got COVID <laughs> and you still want to be present, but you don't want to spread it to anybody. So I don't have the China virus. Right, right. No. <laughs> so I would say, in the vast majority of cases, it is it is almost certain that what you're doing is sinful. Right. There's there's some kind of uh uh self-consciousness there that like fear of man fear of man there's some kind of uh maybe you think that you just don't have to do it Mm -hmm. uh but it could just be you could just be naive you could be you haven't been discipled well you know so for for me for example uh when i first became a christian i sang a lot and it was terrible and people around me suffered and then uh, I started wondering, like, oh, I don't have to sing. This is I thought this was, oh, this is just something that people are doing. But I, I can just kind of stand there. Right. Now, was I wrong? Yes. Was I sinful in, in how wrong I was? I, I, don't, I don't know. I just think there, there has to be a spectrum yeah. there, right? There's, there's a difference between uh, so o- omitting something. Yeah, because out you of don't, ignorance. You don't recognize yeah. that it's commanded in Scripture. Yeah. And seeing that command... And saying no, I just I I won't do it because I don't want people to hear my voice. Yeah, or because it makes me uncomfortable. I mean, at the end of the day, whether it's sinful or not, let's set that that question aside. Okay. It's not good. Yeah, God has called on every member of the church to sing to one another to build up the church. So if you're not doing that, you are not partaking in the ordinary means that God has provided for his church to be strengthened. And, and perhaps I've asked the wrong question because our goal should be more than simply avoiding obvious sin. Right. We should be being faithful and obedient. That's right. We're looking for maximum help. That's right. Yeah. So, okay. So that's why we sing. Yeah. Um, I want to make an argument that one of the primary issues with congregational singing in churches today is a professionalization of the music ministry, the music making ministry of that church. So no paid staff. That's what we're saying. (laughs) That's that's not what we're saying. Oh, okay. We'll come to that. Okay. 
So the professionalization of the music making ministry of your church, I want to argue is a very bad thing, spiritually speaking. Very bad it's a thing. Very bad thing. Okay. Do so, you want to do you want to modify that language? Uh very, very bad. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna ratchet it up. <laughs> So, so here's my basic argument. Okay. All right. So the professionalization of ministry in general is a spiritually bad thing. Okay. Number two, congregational music making is a ministry. It's a ministry of every member of the okay. church. So by that logic, the professionalization of the music making ministry of the church is a spiritually bad thing. Yeah. So let's, let's start with the first one. Okay. Uh, professionalization of the ministry, spiritually bad thing. No paid pastors. Not what I'm saying. Hold on. <laughs> Russell, I am I am the avatar for everyone out there who is know, automatically going to misunderstand you. So let's the so let's unpack the word okay. professionalization. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Sounds like a good word. Yeah. Professionals are are admired. Yeah. They're good at what they do. It, yeah. It, it, the word has a connotations of excellence. Yeah. Don't we want our best people leading music? I would think so. Yeah. Th- uh, think of sports teams. So if you were into sports ball. Yeah, right. And you're watching. You know I am. You're watching your favorite sports ball game. Yeah. Do you want the professional trying to win that championship, or do you want to be down there as a fan fumbling the ball? And, and right. Obviously not. Yeah. So you want the best people up front. Yeah. The problem with that analogy is that that's a performance. Right. And what we do on Sunday mornings when we gather together as the church yeah. is not a performance. And it shouldn't be a performance. Yeah. So when we see professionalization in the ministry, what we see is a concentration of ministerial responsibility into a select few people, usually people who are actually very good at what they do. Yeah. So people who are uniquely talented in music, in singing, in evangelism, in teaching. Sure. And that ministry is concentrated into that handful of staff or handful of individuals. Yeah to the uh, exclusion of other members of the church. Okay. We would cert- we would we even say ordinary members of the church, yeah. which would kind of be the category that's created by yeah. this split in ministry. If we really want to be snooty, we'll say the lay the persons, lay persons the church, of the church. Yes. Yeah, so here's the problem with that. Um Wait, sorry. Let's yeah. just let's just put a let's tighten that up a little bit. Let's yep. say it in one sentence. Okay. Okay. So the professionalization of ministry yes. is when you have a concentration of ministerial responsibility okay. into a handful of people to the exclusion of the regular members of the church. Gotcha. Yeah. So there is a ministry to being a church member. Yeah, that's right. So let's just pause right here and like let's make sure that we understand that when we say professionalization and we're using it as a pejorative. Yes. We don't mean people that are paid to do a good job. Absolutely. There is nothing or wrong paid with to having do a mediocre job. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having paid staff at your yeah. church. Your pastor uh is let's say you have a senior pastor who makes a mm-hmm. salary that is perfectly grounded in scripture it's a good thing it's a good thing yeah, yeah the laborer deserves his wages yeah. don't muzzle an ox when he's treading out the grain these are biblical yeah. principles that paul used to defend yeah. paying pastors but however yeah if that pastoral position gets viewed by the church yeah. as the guy who does the ministry so that I can sit and watch and, right. and, and have this sort of spectator attitude, yeah. then that position is now uh, creating a professionalization of the ministry that's very spiritually unhealthy. So as a pastor, Scripture tells me in Ephesians chapter 4 that it is my job to equip the saints that's right. for the work of the ministry. I yes. do have a ministry, but my ministry is equipping the saints so that they can do ministry. Right. Okay. In contrast to pastor as CEO, judge, jury executioner the one who does it all that's right okay so professionalization is the latter okay good. exactly and now, that that professionalization of the ministry that concentration of responsibility into a handful yeah that can happen whether those people are paid or not sure yeah uh, right. so so that's really not the issue here so this yeah. this idea that church member is an office essentially right uh, that doesn't mean there aren't other god-given distinctions between pastor and deacon sure. and church member but a church member has a lot of responsibilities in the church speak the truth to one another in love so building up the church that's right if okay. you if you have questions about this just open your new testament and start looking for one another verses there it is you're yeah. gonna find over a dozen of them and that yeah. is your ministry as a church member. job description so when you stop doing those things because the guys who get paid on staff do them, yeah. there's a problem. And professionalization has occurred. That's okay. right. And so it's very spiritually bad for a church. It creates consumerism. Uh, it, it creates nominalism and, and festers nominalism right. and spiritual right. unhealth within a congregation. Uh, so, okay. so we have that category in place. Good to go. All right, number two, congregational singing. Yeah. 
it's one of those ministerial responsibilities. So going back to what I said earlier yeah. in my little spiel. Yep, yeah. exactly. So Colossians 3.16, which you mentioned, uh, Paul uses similar language in Ephesians 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, we are to sing to one another. We're to uh, make melody to the Lord in our hearts in a way that is not uh, merely a personal experience, subjective, quiet thing that we have between ourselves and God while we listen to professionals right. playing music on a stage. Right. It's something that we as members of the congregation should be actively and audibly doing with one another. That's right. Uh, it's not Ephesians 5 for all the haters out there that oh. wanted to tear Russell down for that, but it doesn't matter. You got it's the not, right book. I, no. All right. I'm going to check that later. Dude, I'm going to pull it up right okay. now. Okay. All right. But Pause. Th- pa- <laughs> Dang, it is! It uh, is a man's vibe. Uh, hey, don't edit this out. I need my, people to see that I'm human. And, and watch and watch me and watch me gloating over the fact yeah. that I was right. Uh, apparently, human too. Yeah, that's right. But no, yeah. So uh, this is part of our ministry in the church. Yeah. When when we think about okay, how is God going to build the church? How is God going to strengthen the church? What are the ministries in the church? You might be inclined to think about those things uh, in terms of like. This is something I sign up for. Right. I, I wear I on a t-shirt. t-shirt. Yep. I get a training. Yeah. Right. And now I'm part of a team. And yeah. then we go, we have like, you know, follow-up training, continuing education and all that stuff. And uh, that can be one way to carry out ministry. But even if none of those things ever happen, what we tell people when they join our church, Sixth Avenue Community Church, come see us. <laughs> Whenever people join our church, we tell them, Listen, if you never sign up for Gospel Kids Ministry, right, if you never are a door greeter, if you never do biblical counseling, if you never do any of that stuff, you have a ministry in the life of this church. And that involves rebuking and exhorting one another, that involves weeping and praying for one another, but it also involves on Sunday morning when we gather together as a church you sing God's truth to your neighbor yeah. and see them built up by God's word. And and you can and should do that without having to put your name on a clipboard and wear a t-shirt. That's right. That has your church's logo on it. Yeah, that's right. Again, not that those things are necessarily wrong, but I think they often communicate this sort of super Christian versus regular Christian. You know, I'm the guy doing ministry. When, when the whole point of congregational singing, which we should all participate in, yeah. is mutual edification that's right. to the glory of God. That's right. So let's paint a picture. Okay. Two different churches. You go to one church, uh, very loud professional band up front. Uh, you you have a very darkly lit room where you mm-hmm. almost can't see the people who are seated around you. Yeah. Uh, you Let's say you love the song and you start to sing along and you can kind of only hear your own voice. Because it's uh, so loud. Because it's so loud. Yeah. Uh, you look around and you see people kind of move in their mouths. Most of them have their eyes closed, maybe their hands raised. They're very obviously having a deep emotional experience from the music. Sure. Uh, this would describe, I think, a lot of what we see in evangelical churches. It yeah. just dropped in on a Sunday morning. Right. Now, let's look at a different kind of church. Okay. So you go to a church where the room is brightly lit. You actually see all the people around you moving their mouths and singing. Yeah. You see someone up front, perhaps a professional, someone who's got a a great deal of talent in singing and playing a musical instrument. But that voice is not overpowering all the other voices in the congregation. That's right. It's a voice that is distinct enough to be heard, but just enough to lead the congregation in singing themselves. Yeah. Uh, you hear your own voice, you hear the voices around you, but none of them stand out in any particular way. They kind of all come together to make one voice. Yeah. Uh, that may seem like, you know, exaggerated sort of division between these two extremes. But the point is, is that you can sort of feel this professionalization of ministry in the music making ministry of the church just by walking in on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Uh, and the difference, if you just want a litmus test, just ask yourself, am I spectating professionals making music to God, or am I, as part of the congregation, participating in making music to God? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's as simple as I can put it. Yeah. And then there are other questions you can, because even that, I mean, somebody, somebody might ask himself, am I just a spectator? Well, no, I don't think so. I'm singing. Well, let me, a- let me help you ask some other questions to see if you really are. Can you hear yourself sing? Mm. Can you hear your neighbor sing? Can you hear the voice of the entire congregation? Yeah. The person or people on stage, does it seem like that stage is designed for all of the attention to 
be on them. Right. Is there a spotlight on them and, yeah. and darkness, sort of like blinders on a horse? Yeah. Like you have to look to the front. No other way. You're being discouraged from looking at your brothers and sisters in Christ yeah. as they sing the same song. Yeah, that's right. That's that's not congregational singing. You know, in the life of our own church uh, recently, uh, First of all, all of our people kind of stand slightly to the right on the stage, which is fine. It's a little thing that we do. I do think it helps so that we're not all locking eyes on one person. But uh, recently, Grant has really started knocking it out of the park on the piano. For those who don't know, Grant is a guy that a friend of ours, an elder who leads worship, uh, singing worship at our church. And the piano is way off to the side of the stage. And so there are often times now where we sing songs uh, that he's leading where we don't see anybody at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that only helps. Yeah, you know? I think so too. Yeah, um, we didn't plan that, but it's been a, it's been, it's been good. So, so what I want to argue now is that because congregational singing is a music making ministry in the church, okay. and the professionalization of that ministry is a spiritually bad thing. Yeah, um, it, here's what it can lead to. So we've already talked about how the professionalization of ministry in general starts to breed uh, a, a consumerism and, a, and nominalism, which can fester in the church, yeah. mostly through inactive members who aren't uh, obeying those responsibilities that come with that office. When you see that in music in particular, it just sort of sets the tone for the rest of the ministry of the church. Mm. And so this is, this is not a hard and fast rule, but if you were to drop into one of those churches where you show up to a darkly lit room, you have a spotlight on some band up front, yeah. music that's so loud you can only hear yourself and the guy singing in the front. Yeah. Uh, that is is setting the stage for, no pun intended, it's, it's teaching you yeah. that church is primarily a thing between you and the performance up front where you get fed personally, you have some subjective emotional yeah. experience, yeah. which is not a bad thing. No. Um, but that really, it's not about any of the people around you except for maybe a few minutes after the service is over. Yeah, before, after. And so yeah. you'll see that trickle into the rest of the interactions in the church. You'll mm. see a, a real uh, a stalling and, a, and a, a dysfunction in the discipleship, uh, the, the interactions between members, the sense of community that should naturally develop within a healthy church. Yeah. All of that shrivels up and at times dies yeah. when the entire service is sort of structured like a movie theater. Yeah, so you're talking about it in a way that might make it sound like cause and effect. The way that that works is like the singing, and, and maybe you're not saying this, mm -hmm. the singing could cause these other things to happen. I don't know if it's that simple. It's, I would say, well, go ahead. I say it's not what I mean. Okay, good. I say it's a, it's a symptom of the same underlying. That's problem. right. So if you see it in that way, you're going to see it in the eldership of, or leadership right. of the church. You're going to see it here. You're going to see it there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm not saying that this is a slippery slope. Like if you get yeah. your music wrong, your church is going to fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying that this is one manifestation of a poor understanding of what membership in a church right. is and yeah. what the responsibility of a church yeah. member is. Um, and, and yeah, so here's a couple of things I'm not saying also. Okay. I'm not saying that this is a symptom of people who play guitars or modern instruments. Right. Up front. That's right, right. not what professionalization is. What about the tambourine? The tambourine, uh, cowbell perhaps. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm a member of a church right now that has struggled with some of the same things, professionalization yeah. of music, and they just have a choir. Yeah. It's the same kind of concept. You put the good singers up front to loudly perform and yeah. cover up the voices of the congregation. So yeah. Nobody feels too uncomfortable. Nobody yeah. has to sing. Same concept. Yeah. Uh, so you can see this in any variety of style of music. Sure. I mean, you can even, you know, what we've been talking about is kind of the low church, yeah. you know, dollar store evangelicalism version, version of this. But you know, you can get the Smells and Bells version oh, yeah. of this, too. The, the Westminster Boys Choir. <laughs> you go up into the Anglican <laughs> church, and they got the the incense swinging, and the yeah. and it's it's the same thing. It's just the highbrow version of it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how do we prevent this? Well, I want to say fire. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how we, that's how we get rid of it. Oh, okay. Uh, prevent it. Good teaching. Got to start there. Everything starts with good teaching. Always. Yeah, that's right. So we, we're teaching members what their responsibilities are yeah. in the life of a church, yeah. which is heavy in one another passages. It's heavy in teaching them concepts like the authority that they wield as a congregation. Mm -hmm. Matthew 18, Matthew 16, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, church discipline, sure, all that kind all of that stuff. stuff yeah. uh, also teaching them, just like you did, what singing is and why we do it. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. know, we, we I think about Revelations chapter 5. So in the end... 
we will all be praising God, singing to him as yeah. one unified congregation for eternity. Yeah. And that's incredible. We're rehearsing for that. Yeah. Every time we gather and sing. That's right. Let your congregation know that's what we're doing. It's not just yeah. for, for fun. Yeah. It's not so we can feel yeah. a little warm, tingly feeling. It's because we are rehearsing for heaven. Yeah. Well, what you don't want to do... we. I don't want some like young pastor or some guy who aspires to be a pastor to to watch this episode and be like, I'm going to go flog the sheep, you know, like sing, you know, whoosh, louder, you know, that's not what we're aiming for. What we want is like anytime you're trying to lead anybody down a path, you want to give them a vision. Yeah. But the good news is, is like in this instance, you don't have to think of a vision. Right. God's given you the vision. Right. It's a grand, glorious, eternal vision. It's so all you have to do. Uh, stay with me here. All right. Take notes if you need to. All you have to do is just read the Bible and see what the Bible says. And then it's just try not to screw it up. And then you just tell your people what God has already said. And then if they really belong to him, they'll be like, oh man, that's amazing. I need to sing this. I should do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that has happened to me, mm -hmm. Russell. I was the guy who did not like to sing. I can't sing, and people tend to not like things that they're not very good at. You yeah. notice people who can sing, they're singing to you every chance they get. I learned to love to sing because I realized that God loves for me to sing, yeah. and my heart changed because of it. Yeah the, yeah, the carrot is so good that you don't need the stick. That's right, yeah. Uh, and, and that's another argument for having very scripturally saturated songs. Yeah. God's people love God's word. Yeah. And if I can't find a scrap of scripture in a song, yeah, I might not want to sing it either. Dude, just last week we sang uh, Thy Will Be Done. It's a, I don't remember who's, anyways. Some old dead guy. Dude, I was so ministered to. Mm. I, I was so built up. I was so encouraged. And I know that I was not the only one in the room singing that song who felt strengthened by singing it you know absolutely and uh praise god so it, but you know i would not have felt that way singing about god's sloppy wet kisses yeah okay all right maybe a different episode on that <laughs> yeah. just on bad song lyrics just on bad song lyrics yeah. uh so another one uh, creating a culture of singing yeah you've talked about this before yeah so uh you just want it to be normal you don't want it to feel weird for people you want to encourage families to sing together which is weird but it doesn't have to be weird if you get past it in the internship that you and i did mm. uh you know it's not it was not uncommon for a group of men whenever they were somewhere to you know somebody would whip out a hymn and you would sing it together you would do it in service planning meetings and it was super weird the first couple of times we did it but then it became normal to me anyways over the course of five months and it's something i I began to enjoy and yeah there, there are a lot of things you can do to just make singing together a normal part of your church culture even so for us for example on wednesday night we primarily do an inductive bible study and uh, prayer but we always sing at the end uh, yeah. with the doxology just we want we want people to know that singing is just a normal part of our lives yeah that's yeah. good it, and it's, it's a bit like prayer you know when i was a new christian yeah praying with my family was awkward yeah. Uh, asking to pray yeah. around other Christians was awkward. I was worried I was going to say the wrong thing. Yeah. I didn't have my thoughts together. Yeah. Uh, and then I just kept doing it. Yeah. And it wasn't awkward anymore. And then I felt like I needed to do it. And right. I wanted to do it. Yeah. Singing is the same way. That's right. So any closing thoughts? Uh, you said teaching, making it a part of the culture. I would say if you're out there and you're listening to us and you're in any kind of leadership role, just role modeling. Yeah. Like sing well. Mm -hmm. You know, dude, listen. Uh, I sing my heart out on Sunday mornings. And uh, because of that, sometimes people kind of create, long before social distancing, people were giving me a wide berth. <laughs> I would just uh, plug my ear when I was next to you. That's so, right. So I could hear the correct tune. Yeah, yeah. But um, whether I'm feeling it or not, you know, I'm, I'm trying to lead from the front and I'm trying to sing well and I try to look around and, and, and uh, yeah, just make it a normal part of our life as a leader because everything that you do from the top will trickle down. Yeah. You and, know. And that that godly forgetfulness, that self forgetfulness. Yeah, we didn't talk displayed. about that, but yeah. Uh, but you displayed that very well uh, yeah. when we were at the same church. And and I saw other people who were worried they couldn't sing. Yeah. Were super encouraged by that. Yeah. They're like yeah. if Sean is gonna belt that loud and sound like that, <laughs> I can honor God a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, and it works. I mean it really yeah. does encourage people. Let's let's end on that note of self -for self forgetfulness. Let's talk about the illustration that I think will help drive home the importance of self forgetfulness and singing. Because I think I think the vast majority of the people listening to us right now, Russell, are not concerned necessarily with theological arguments. No. They just feel uncomfortable singing loudly in church. Yeah. Okay. Um 
imagine that you are in some ancient city in the ancient Near East a couple thousand years ago, okay? The city's walled off, and uh, the army has gone out from the city, uh, and they have been at battle for several months now. Uh, There's a siege around the city. Things are not going well. There's famine. There's hunger. There's thirst. And uh, you guys are really suffering in the city. And one of the things that happens every day around dusk is that people line up along the wall of the city, and they look out across the horizon for news of the battle, right? They're waiting for a messenger, for someone to come tell them uh, what's going on. Are we, are we defeated? Uh, is victory on the horizon? You know, what's the deal? And every day you line up on the wall and you wait and nothing happens. No one comes. Husbands, fathers, sons out dying in battle. It's just, it's a brutal time for the city. And then finally, after months, maybe even years of waiting, Uh, you see a messenger coming over the horizon, right? And you can slowly see him as he runs closer and closer and he begins to wave and to shout. And as he gets close enough for you to hear him, you can hear him saying, we won, right? We won, we've got the victory, right? In that moment, you and everyone else lined along the wall of the city erupt in joy, right? Celebration. Now, in that moment, when you realize that you have the victory, you don't think about yourself. You don't think about how you sound in that moment when you start to shout and sing for joy. You're lost. You're in a state of self-forgetfulness as you just rejoice in the good news, right? And that's what singing should be for us every single Sunday in the church, right? Mm -hmm. Every Sunday, we are coming together to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. And when we really believe it, there should be a sense of self-forgetfulness there, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, we don't think about us. We're thinking about Jesus and everyone else who's lined up with us, ready to go to heaven. Amen. Yep. All right. Well, thanks for listening. You can catch us on iTunes, on Podcatcher, Podcasty Things. Podbean. Uh, YouTube. YouTube. Hey, Facebook. on YouTube, listen. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, click that notification bell. Yeah, man. our Facebook gets like thousands of views. YouTube, not so much. Mm. And, you know, if we're going to take over the world, like Pinky in the Brain, we got to get more YouTube views. I don't even want to ask who you think you are in that duo. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Signing Bye. Off. Signing off. Bye.